Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of When Great Minds Collaborate. I am your host and the founder and CEO of Cornerstone Paradigm Consulting. We're an industry agnostic business operations consulting firm covering end-to-end -end business ops, that's people, process, technology, customer experience. Uh, we are the folks that go into your business, get to the root cause of business issues and solve them once and for all so that you can scale and grow. Um, guys, today I am so excited for this conversation. This is going to be one a hell of a conversation because Judy Harrington is a dear friend of mine. She is just one of the best people I know. Um, and frankly, we've had conversations that can go on for hours. Um, so Judy, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I know I was like, how long will we be on this conversation today? So I feel like although the show is clocked for about 30 minutes, yeah. who knows with the two of us, right? Yeah, um, right. We can squeeze a lot in in 30 minutes. We We're can like, squeeze a lot like, in. 10 pounds of fun in a five pound bag. I know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Here we go. I love it. Here we go. We are really, we're going to really quite literally dive right into this, this conversation are. today. But before we talk about in this, today's show, we're going to call it copy that people understand, which we are going to unpack. Um, tell us the, the, the viewers a little bit about who you are. I mean, I know who you are. I know how fantastic you are, but tell the viewers a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. I'm Judy Harrington. I am the content creator and copywriter known as Judy 411. And I have all the 411 for writing for your business. I have all the 411 you didn't know you needed. Yeah. And I like to specialize in what I call making the mundane miraculous. So I tend to work in finance, real estate, and law. And sometimes mm -hmm. we call that the boring topic industry. Yeah. And I like to say that I take your boring topics, infuse life into them, and make people want to give you money. Oh, I love that. And who doesn't want money, right? I've never yes. met anyone who said, no, 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 I, I have enough. Exactly. Um, you want your money. Right. Exactly. Okay. So I think it's interesting, um, you know, writing copy and, and, and it's actually not, you know, and even I, I, I imagine attorneys, which I have quite a bit of experience with them, but, um, you know, writing copy is not as easy as one might think, even for folks who believe that they are great writers or that there frankly is no one in the world who's better than them. Copy is not that easy to write. It's not because right? it's really about simplifying a message so people understand why it's important and makes them want to take action. So I think, Judy, there is a little bit of a misconception. Um, you know, certainly when it comes to writing and copy, um, mm. there are folks that are, let's say, academically very academically inclined and feel that the more jargon that you put in, in, in the copy, you know, the smarter that you sound, the more versed you sound on the topic, but you're saying that's actually not true. It's not true. In fact, when I see jargon laden copy, it immediately puts me on high alert. If I have to go Google the terms you're using in your copy, then it's not doing its job. Um, you know, like for instance, in finance, like one of the phrases we use often is like money in motion. And that actually gets something across very quickly. Like when we talk about money in motion, we're talking about life changing events, job changes, marriage, divorce, death, those right. types of things. So money in motion, that piques the curiosity a little bit more than saying, I'm a mortgage broker or I'm a financial advisor who specializes in people who blah, blah, blah. blah. It, it, you're going to go to sleep if you hear a sentence that starts with, I do blah, blah, blah. What you want to do is get people to understand that like, I can help you solve X problem. Got it. And I'm a big fan of plain English. Just tell people what you do. I help people buy homes. I help people save for retirement. I help people get the home of their dreams. Like very simple, concrete concepts, and then show why you do, how you do it differently and why they need to contact you. So I guess the, the thing that, and I'm channeling someone who, who I had a, an interesting conversation with about this, and they would say to you, and I wonder what your response would be, so now I'm gonna just ask you live on the show. Uh, I, I <laughs> love it. Say, they would questions. say, well, I'm not writing for the average person, I'm writing this white paper, this whatever it is 
for someone who is interested in this topic? What do you say to them that they're saying, oh, I use all this jargon, I'm using these phrases and terms because the people who I'm targeting know this topic. They're also doctors or scientists or whatever it is. Um, what are you saying to them? Well, I often say, well, what is it that you want to accomplish with this piece of writing? And that usually puts them a little bit on their heels. I'm like, you can pontificate for whatever points you want to an audience, but if you're not asking them to do something with the information you're giving them, then you're missing the opportunity for a true connection. Right. Okay. Copy is designed to connect and create connection and manifest better relationships. So you really need to get into taking a step back and thinking about what's the purpose of writing this? And I often meet with clients and they say, oh, I want a newsletter. I'm like, okay, well, why do you want a newsletter? And sometimes like, well, everybody's doing it. I'm like, yeah, but do you need to do it? Like, what do you want to accomplish with this newsletter? Is it that you're looking to promote a new line of services? Are you looking to leverage relationships with your existing clients? Is this part of a lead magnet that's as part of your website? Like there's so much more that goes into it and you need to really think about it from the 30,000 foot view first and then zone in on what the message is that you want to convey and the result that you're looking for. Because yeah. marketing without results is just screaming into the tide. So would you consider yourself a marketer? I consider myself a marketer. I'm part yes. of, I would like to think of myself as part of a marketing team. So a lot of times I collaborate with website designers or branding experts to be yeah. a piece of the puzzle. Um, but sometimes I have clients who come to me and will say, I just need like a quick thing. I just need some, a few things on my website. And I'm like, and that's usually the screaming five alarm, you know, orange alert that I'm like, mm, let's take a look at what you have yeah. because copy isn't on its own, always going to solve your problem. And often I find people come to me looking for a website copy refresh when, and then when I go to their website, they're talking about too many things, or maybe they had a business that pivoted from one piece of the market to another, and they're still residual of you know, market A, and they're trying to move into market B. Um, sometimes it's a user experience issue. I can't navigate your website clearly, and I find myself just wanting to go elsewhere. Um, so we sometimes, excuse me, we'll get into some of the, you know, the, the, the data behind it, kind yeah. of the analytics of it. Like, what's your bounce rate? What, what is it that's making you feel like you need to have a website copy refresh? And what I am learning more and more every day is that most people are not feeling that they can refer people to their website with confidence. Yeah. And that's yeah. not something that only copy will solve. But as someone who's, you know, I consider myself like a trusted advisor to my clients. I, I have a network of people who work in branding, who work in website design. And then I should bring those people in on a team together to consult and move a project forward. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you would be a part of a marketing team. And when you say that you, you, you're a copywriter and a content creator. So mm -hmm. does that mean that you're doing infographics and all of that jazz? Like what mostly, is mostly the messaging of content? So we're talking about the themes that you want to discuss a lot of thought leadership. Those are some of the things that I'll, I'll talk about with people um, and getting messages out on a certain form to attract a specific type of audience. So for example, people who are on LinkedIn yeah. and want to get more, um, robust engagement or are looking to connect more meaningfully with their connections. I mean, some, a lot of people put a LinkedIn profile up 10 years ago, forgot about it, and now they're doing something completely different and they have interesting things to say about their industry and they want to get that message out there. So that's kind of, it's more of the content messaging that I focus on. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And it's funny because uh, just yesterday I had a, a client talking to me about, you know, they're hiring and looking at some profiles and one profile had run on sentences. And she, and she said, you know, I, I think I'll overlook that. You know, people notice, they notice when you just kind of put something together and throw it up there. And 
you know, so it does, it, it, it perception is everything. Um, it really is. You only have one shot to make a first impression as much as that's a tired trope. It's a really true one. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, I'm very thankful for the person who wrote mine. I'm sure it could use a, a zhuzh, uh, but you know, I'm very thankful for, for the person that wrote mine because that's not my area of expertise. Okay, so you say that you write copy that make people give your clients money. What does that mean? So is someone gonna see this and say, oh, Judy's gonna write me some, some great blogs, some great copy, and everyone is just going to come to me with a handful of money and say, here you go. Thank you so much. Well, it's not going to be immediate. Content is definitely a longer game. But what I like to focus on, for, here's a great example for like in the newsletter community. Like I'm a big fan of, well, I believe that social media is certainly a piece of your marketing where I think a lot of business owners overlook or the power of newsletters and email campaigns to your existing audience. So like talk to the converted, right? People who yeah. already know, like, and trust you. So one example of this is in um, commercial insurance. Now everybody's now probably like ready to go take a nap. But I'm telling you, this is exciting stuff. So I worked with a commercial insurance agent to kind of highlight the success stories of what it's like when you have a claim and when it goes right and you get paid for it. Um, something when you're a business owner, something's going to go wrong someday. If you don't have the right coverage, you're going to be on the hook for it. Yeah. So we highlighted um, different success stories of clients who had proper coverage. And when this issue came up, they were able to get reimbursed. They were able to get covered by their insurance company. And we also managed to highlight different aspects. This particular insurer you know, did commercial insurance, but they also did personal and casualty, which a lot of their existing customers didn't know. Okay. So this gets into like letting people know that like sometimes clients come to you for like one particular kind of service, yeah. but they don't necessarily know that you have several others. And I see this a lot with business owners to like, you know, People didn't know I did X, Y, Z. I'm like, because you yeah. don't mention it on your website anywhere. Right. right. Like, people are, are not mind readers, right? We're only as good as the information we share. And so, even, you're saying even the folks that believe that they're sharing all of this information, it may not be clear. It may be clear to them, but not to the people person on the receiving end. But what was interesting about this, too, is that for this particular client, they had um, one of the newsletter topics was ensuring newer drivers. So we talked about how it feels as a parent to send your teenager who's newly minted with their driver's license off mm -hmm. into the universe and how it's like a lot of emotions, right? You you think about the nostalgia when you learn to drive and the yeah. freedom that you have. And then we immediately followed it with, oh, and then you get the insurance bill. Yeah. and how much higher your premium is now that you have a younger driver. Well, this particular insurance agent has access to um, insurance networks that specialize in insuring newer drivers. Even I didn't know about this. I was like, really? Yeah. We sent out this email and it was such a universal thing. There were so many people there who had kids who, whose teenagers just started to drive. Or, and I fell into this myself. I was a later driver. I didn't actually really start driving until I was in my late 20s. Mm. So for newer drivers, this is a great solution. And they were able to give great coverage at a very competitive price. But we took, we kind of turned the messaging of insurance on its head. A lot of times people think about insurance and they think, oh, they're going to tell me another story about how somebody didn't have coverage and then all these terrible things happen. Yeah. No, we're going to celebrate what happens when things go well. Right. Okay. And that messaging alone, really, the, the client told me every time I hit send, I make money. And because we took the, the time to think about what are you celebrating as opposed to what are you warning people about? People don't want to hear any more bad news. Right. Give them some good news. It's, yeah. I mean, and I think it, it can sometimes be challenging to speak to the issues all the time, as opposed to speaking to like, I think, I think people do resonate with issues. But they mm -hmm. all, I also think they resonate with success as well. Success stories. 
I just feel like the success stories just really resonate with people. People are really craving good news. Yeah. Fundamentally, and not, I mean, I just think this is a truism regardless of the time we're living in, but given yeah. that we, we've been for the past two years, yeah, people want good news. Yeah, they're tired. It's exhausting. Bad news is, can be really exhausting. Okay, so you mentioned that you work with people who are in branding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like sometimes people are looking for an all-in-one. They're looking for someone to help them with branding and marketing and messaging and writing and, you know, painting the house and like they just want all the yeah, one stop shop. You know, one person to kind of do everything. And, and you're saying it actually doesn't really work like that. Well, I mean, I find that collaborating with some of these folks really brings a different flavor to things, especially because I work in and I specialize in finance, real estate, law, transactional type of relationships. Yeah. Um, I'm not the person for you know, a retail website, probably not the best fit for that. Like I know, like I know where my lane is. I know where my zone of genius is. Um, but what I find that is like working with these agencies as a collaborator, then when they have a product that fits my niche, I'm the person that comes to mind because it's not often you find a copywriter who can talk about mutual funds <laughs> and, yeah. and who can talk about complex business relationships, like even the type of work that you do, like getting into the details and getting people to understand like operations and really get into the nitty gritty and share a case study of how you dove into the data, found out where the inefficiencies were, and then fix them. And then you develop the data, yeah. which is very fun. I have, Judy, I have clients that I've had for years mm -hmm. that still couldn't articulate what I do they just know that if they don't know how to do it, it's the answers to call me, yeah. <laughs> which is very funny. Like quite literally, that's how they describe. I don't, I don't know. Call Amanda like that. That's Amanda will know. Yeah. She'll it's know. Funny because I'm that person too. People are like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know about such and such, but I bet Judy knows. Yeah. And, and no, nine times out of 10, I do know. Yeah. I know someone who it's does it. I know someone who, who's an expert in such and such a field, like people come to me, do you know a yeast biologist? I'm like, yeah, I know two of them. Yeah, I know. I, know, I, know. I know these things, I just know them. I know. Yeah. I know. We have the same, same, same gift, I suppose. Yeah, so, I do. I do. so I think it's very interesting what you do. And we're going to talk about the book, I call it. In a the second. book. In a second. The book. Um, really what you do, I think it, it is a gift, frankly, because uh, we've worked with copywriters on my website and don't judge it. We're in the process of doing it over. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> I say this all the time, right? What did I say to you? Yeah. I don't judge. I'm like the planet fitness. I mean, you could and should. Right. That is what I'm I'm saying. saying. I'm like, this is the no judgment zone. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You could and should. I'm going to get, you're gonna get more, um, what is it? More flies with honey than vinegar. Um, yeah, this is going to be vinegar. No, I mean, I, I know it's bad. I, I, I know. I'm so aware. I'm in the process of, we're in the process of doing it over. Mm -hmm. um, but there's really, a, and, and we've worked with copywriters, frankly, in the past, um, several. Um, and, you know, even someone like myself who does not specialize in this area. And a lot of what we do is very technical and mm -hmm process mapping and technology stack mapping. And there's only so, so much sexy you can inject in it, right? It's really not sexy. It's not, you know, there's, it's this not. is not a Justin Timberlake moment. No, it's not. Um, but there are ways to show why it's important. Yeah. Right? Um, and so, so there is there, like, I think to your point, there is a little bit of a science to this, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to really understand how to read the data and the story that's told behind it. And how to connect, how to, how to, how do folks on the receiving end connect with it and understand it? And then of course, digest it, um, yes. which kind of segues me into, I'm going to call it the book. Okay. I don't know if you can reveal the title of it, which I know. Um, we'll talk about your newsletter, which I do get, which is hilarious. <laughs> by the way, every time I read your newsletter, I hear you reading it to me. Actually, it's written in your Thank voice. You. 
Thank you so much. Um, which is very funny because every time that we have like a one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, I, I know your voice. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very, very clear on your voice. And yeah. when I read your newsletter, I'm like, oh, this is Judy talking. Like, it yeah, is quite literally you talking. People would know my voice and Fenway Park on opening yeah. day. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the book. So the book, um, I'm not sure about whether we can share the title because of its saltiness, but I will uh, reveal that it is a modern take on family dysfunction. Okay. How to embrace the crazy instead of fighting against it. So how do you embrace the crazy? What crazy? I, are we, I, is just, it I just look for the fun and dysfunctional. That's really what okay. it comes down to. Is a, so it's a collection of family stories that go back to growing up with um, a father who is a rabid Red Sox fan, um, a mother who we like to say has a PhD in revisionist history. And, um, you know, and just this stories of sibling rivalry, there's stories of, I mean, there's stories of, of romance, of meeting my well, soon to be ex-husband, but, you know, there was a wonderful time in our lives together and I, I embraced that chapter. Um, and in the stories of, of raising two kids who just look at the world a little differently. For example, I had a daughter who wanted to be Jewish and asked for a menorah from Santa. And I said, okay, sure. Like, why not? I had Jewish friends who had Christmas trees that so we were going to be a Catholic family with a menorah. Like, I saw no reason why this couldn't happen. Like, yeah. I just don't see why you need to say no to things like that. I have another child who had an entire imaginary family that their stories bordered on a Jerry Springer episode. I mean, so I just said there's something funny to be seen here. And I just embraced those moments. And I so like that you, Judy, are sort of grounded in being individualistic and yes. you allow people, yeah. even your own kids, to be who they are, yeah. whatever that means today. And sometimes yeah. that's going to be different from today, uh, from, from tomorrow. Be from who today. you are. Everyone else is taken. So embrace what you love and do do your thing. Like, I mean, we've talked about this, too. Like my older daughter is starting to be an auto mechanic and. And it, even though in, it's 2022, I still, people are like, really? Yeah. Like, it, like the most exotic thing in the world. She's like, oh, auto mechanic? I'm like, yeah, she fixed cars. That's what right. she does. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually and, a very, do you know that very famous woman? Um, I want to say she's in Pennsylvania. I don't think she she's an auto mechanic anymore, but do you, yeah. I feel like, do you know who she is? I can't, her name is. My tongue, I can't think of who it is, but yes. I Very, very famous. Yes. Auto mechanic. Yes. Beautiful too. Beautiful uh, woman and and, yeah. um, and she did her thing and that's that's what she did. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so I'd love to just kind of, you know, and I know we only have a couple of minutes left, mm -hmm. but. You know, I think it's important, first of all, what you do is an art form and um, it is a talent. I don't possess the talent. Um, I have hired the talent and <laughs> successful or not, I don't know. And copywriters everywhere, thank you, right? Yeah, I mean. We I all have a superpower. I don't think I could do what you do. There's a reason you do what you do and I do what I do, right? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, I, I, I do, I think it's a, it's a very special, unique gift to be able to write and articulate someone else's vision and what they do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited for the book only because, like I said, I know you as well. And like, we've had many of conversations about how hilarious and how relatable this book is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to sort of talk a little bit about your ability to, to translate copy into something that is digestible. It is an art form. I do think there is a bit of a finesse to it. As I've met and worked with copywriters that I don't feel get it or got it and understand the complexity of what someone like myself does. Yeah. So I think there are, I'm a big fan of what I like to call the plain English rule. Um, yeah. Like in the mutual fund world back in the early 2000s, there was a whole movement by the SEC to take mutual fund prospectuses and make them more digestible for the average investor. And 
it, there were very specific rules. You had to speak in plain English, like very few um, acronyms. If you had them, you had to define them, yeah. it, all of that kind of stuff. And, but for me, it's like, what is it at the end of the day that what's the problem that you're solving? Right. And we kind of move into that first and then back into it. Um, and it, it, you know, it's one of those things like it's like I do it so frequently and all, and, and naturally that when I people go, what's your process? I'm like, just do it. Like, like and, yeah. But I also understand that not everybody does this. But right. I will say, and you and I've talked about this too. A lot of people come to me. I'm a terrible writer. I'm a terrible writer. I'm a terrible writer. I'm like, you're not a terrible writer. You've probably been given a lot of bad writing advice. And you're probably walking around with your you know, middle school English teacher's voice inside your head saying, don't end a sentence in a preposition. Don't do this. Don't start a sentence with a conjunction. Don't do this. Don't do that. And the thing is, it's good to know the rules. But once you master them, then you know when to break them. Right. So it's a little bit of just like really digging into like what's the most simple term, almost like caveman. Like what is the thing that you do? And then layering on top of that why okay why is this important why what makes you different how do you do it differently than anyone else and then <clears throat> excuse me and then kind of creating the message from there so if i, I mean at the thirty thousand foot view that's probably the, the 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 simplest way of describing how i do it so i'd love for you to share you know and with a couple of minutes left i'd love for you to share what do you think is important for people to know other than women can be mechanics and we can be, frankly, whatever we want to be. What, what I think is important? important to know yeah. is that your copy is not about you. Ooh. It's, about, it's not about you. It's okay. not about, I went, you know, I went to Harvard, I did this, I have all these designations and that's great. That certainly lends to your credibility and your expertise, but really your copy is about the reader, about the consumer, about the customer, and showing them why what you do is important, why it's important to them, and giving them a clear way to get the conversation started with you. Got it. That's it. Okay. Well, that's a lot. But that's that a is lot. It. I, I make it seem very simple. It's like the reader's diary version, which maybe some readers, some listeners here may not know that reference, but oversimplified, like really broken down. But I mean, at the end of the day, that's what you need to do. You need to, you can't be talking about it like yourself. You have to make it clear to, you're about me on your LinkedIn page or you're about me on your website. It's not actually about you. It's about speaking to your customer. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of, that makes a lot of sense, but also, um, I would tell folks that are similar to me who are highly technical and probably went too winded for, for my own good um, to, to call Judy. Call Judy. <laughs> call Judy. If you don't know, she does. That's that's my answer. Is it complicated? Is it nuanced? Talk to Judy. She would love to, to hear this conversation. She'd love to be a part of it. So kind of that leads me into just closing, closing up. How do folks get in touch with you? You know, if they're thinking, gosh, I, I need this woman in my life, which you do, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The, best way, to in touch with you. the best way to reach me is through my website, Judy411.com, J-U-D-I 411.com. Okay. And um, you'll see the interesting story of how I adopted that name. But it basically comes down to my walking information booth, um, nice. of things that are going on in the world. And I marry that with my love of writing and getting a message across. But and there's a contact form on there, or you can email me at judy at judy411.com. And what about LinkedIn? I mean, LinkedIn, I'm LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn as well. Judy, you McCall. come up on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn too. I'm out there, out in the interwebs. I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. But for this market, I mean, I find that the most traction I get is on LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn. yeah, more of um, you know, Instagram and Facebook are kind of like the fun. Um, you know, water cooler conversation, which I'm like, are we even going to have water coolers anymore now that we're back in the office? Like, I don't know. There's so many things are going to go away. I'm just really curious about yeah. that. But um, it's kind of like a saying fax machine to a millennial or a Gen X. 
it is, it's it's like, like, what's, what's a, a fax cooler? machine? What's a water cooler? It's, yeah, that's gonna, that's what's gonna happen. What's, what's a water cooler? Yeah, that's what's very a water cooler, scary. Right? So, um, yeah. yeah, so you your virtual water, water cooler or your, uh, but yeah. no, follow her on, on LinkedIn. I highly encourage you to connect with Judy. She is fantastic. She's a fantastic person in general. Um, you know, don't blame me when you have too much fun on that phone call when you connect with Judy. Um, no, she's great. And, um, and I always love every conversation we have. Yeah, we always uh, have the best conversation. This is another one, another one for the books. This is another one for the books. It's true. Yeah. That is so true. Yeah. But Judy, I thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, thank this you for having me. Great. It's such a great honor. I appreciate you. I love that you can make some sense out of copy. It is a lot harder, I think, than folks frankly realize. Um, I certainly know how challenging it is, mm -hmm. um, to get the message across and, Lastly, your book. Where can people get your book when it comes out? You said it comes out in October? It's coming out in October. There is an author website that has not launched yet, but it will be very simple to find, judyharrington.com. Okay. I love that. And maybe we'll have you back on, on I would love to come when it back comes out. Book. Um, like yes. I said, I know the title. Um, yes. I find you hilarious I because I know you. I also know you personally. Um, but I think we may have to have you on the show again to talk about your you book. laugh until milk comes out your nose. Okay. Then read my book. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Anyways, Judy, this was so much fun. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, love this. You are coming on again when the book gets published. We need to tell people how to yeah. get it. I'm here to threaten you all with a good time again. Oh, my God. It's so – and you are hilarious. I love you. You are so hilarious. Thank you. And I you. Um, we thank everyone for joining us today. We will see you right here next week, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and CPC TV. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Thanks so Bye. much.